Thank you, Billy. Thank you. Wait, you're still here? <laughs> Larry, you're looking at me like you did too. <laughs> uh, you're still going to interview her, aren't you? I am. Uh, I just... you I don't want reverses. That's what you're. No, I just need cutaways. Is it something we said? <laughs> okay, stand by. Okay. Oh, America. <laughs> the last time we worked on this lot together, I recall that toward the end of the interviews, and it was a long day for you, you went out and sat in the back of a pickup truck, and it looked to me as if you were meditating. No, I don't think Excuse I me. I, I've peaked. That's it. I'm Peaking sorry. <laughs> False start. You want to do it again? Okay. All right. Let's just start. The demands of being a movie star are great, not the least of which is you're expected to be thin and perfect. And we were just talking about that. When you got the role this next, this second time around in The Empire Strikes Back, they wanted you to lose no, weight? No, no. In the first one, I weighed 105. Five, and I think they wanted me to lose 10 pounds, which may sound like very low weight to some people, but I'm about 5'1", so and I have sort of very small skeleton, so I guess it was reasonable enough. So I did my best. And no matter what people think, it's not easier to lose weight just because you're little. You said it was oh, tough. Oh, it's much harder. I mean, I, I, I couldn't break 100. <laughs> that sounds like money. But it took, it, took, it took me forever. And then you have to stay there. But now I have the other trouble. Now I have trouble getting the weight back. On this film, I, at one point, we'd been working 12-hour days. I noticed I hadn't eaten in three days. Mm. The crew had started calling me Tweezer, and I was down to about 85. Mm. So. Mm. The, the expectations, of course, for The Empire Strikes Back are great because of the overwhelming success of Star Wars. So there's a lot of difference going into one production than there was that first one. Uh, nobody could have guessed the phenomenon of Star Wars, least of all those of you who worked on it. No, we, wouldn't, I, we didn't even think about it. You just, you know, you get a job, you think the script is wonderful, you know George Lucas's work is always wonderful, so we were looking forward just to the process of it. You know, you didn't ever sort of think. Was there, because of that success, um, was there more care taken? Was there an implied fear that by comparison this wouldn't be as good? Was the pressure greater the second time around? Uh, not for, I think, the actors so much, maybe, you know, for the people, who would, for Kirsch or whatever. If, if he would think like it, but I don't think Kirsch would think that. He's making it uh, another movie, He's, you know, it's the, the continuing story. Mm -hmm. And I think he did a great job because it's really the same sort of feel of the first film in, in terms of continuation, although it's, the story is much more developed, the characters are more developed, the relationships between them, it's a much den denser plot. And mysteriously enough, it actually ended as if we're going to th see a third. And you are. <laughs> I, really? Is it already in the works? It's being done. Yes, George, I think, is writing it now. Maybe not even as we speak, but now. But this was intended, I think, as a trilogy. So this would be sort of act two. Only the intermissions of, of these, between these acts, would be very long. It would be about a three-year intermission. Though you have done several other things, and I'm sure will do, several other things. Professionally, people are often afraid of being too closely identified with a particular role. You've been Princess Leia twice, and uh, 
has that been of concern, though pleasant, certainly of concern? Well, I, if you have to be saddled with something, this is the pleasantest thing I could be. You know, it is the biggest film of all time, so of course I'm always going to be identified with that no matter. I don't think I can be, they, they can repeat that again in my life. It would be very strange. It would be wonderful. But uh, yes, you get what they call typecast. And people imagine that I do look like that person with the hair like that, or this time I have another strange hairstyle. I always, it seems like a plot to get me how strange they can get my hair to look in each film. But uh, that's indeed what they want. They want hairstyles that are totally unlike anything in contemporary society. You used an interesting term, saddled with. Um, many young people who have successful professional parents consider themselves saddled with a reputation that precedes them. It seems that you have dealt with famous parents and being the child of them very well. Well, what it just does is that, that was my middle name for a long time, Carrie, Debbie Reynolds, daughter Eddie Fisher, daughter Fisher. Now I'm Carrie Star Wars Fisher, or Carrie Princess Leia Fisher, you know, so I just get a new middle name from it. And you're enjoying it all? Yeah, you, but it, it means you're sort of involved in something that's a little bit bigger than yourself, although we've already established that I'm very little. So I could have a lot of middle names in my lifetime. Good things. <laughs> Continued you. success. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you, Carrie. We'll be back. Well, again. I put, no, I put my yeah, arm up here.